a passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver. Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Hello, 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 and welcome to the first show of 2021 on the Dr. Kevin Show. Uh, And we're kicking this off to be quite the year indeed, as always, on the first Thursday of every month, uh, until he decides to dump us. Uh, We have Matt Connerton from Matt Connerton Unleashed coming on the show and sharing his political savvy and view of the world. We try to put a little spiritual context to it some days and some shows we miss that all together because there's just so much shit to wade through. Uh, <laughs> but welcome to 2021. We've got Matt here. We're going to remind you that this is a live call-in show. You can call in at 202-570-7057. That's 202-570-7057. Um, and we just ask if you call in that your comments stay respectful, and at least indicate that you have a double digits on your IQ. Outside of that, Matt, welcome. Hey, how are you? Oh, I am just tap dancing on the moonbeams of life, looking down and going, what is that cloud of brown that's all over the U.S. right now? Oh, it's a shit show. Yes, yes. Yeah, doing well. So I will ask, since I haven't talked to you for since November. Yeah. Uh, did you have good holidays? Oh, fine. Uh, you know, uneventful. Just you know, we didn't uh, we didn't go anywhere. Didn't really do anything. We were supposed to do uh, uh, the holidays at uh, Jenny's parents down in Massachusetts, but you know, we decided uh, no, we're gonna we're gonna celebrate the holidays in July this year, so. Oh, well, there you go. So, you know, because there's, there's, there is a great national holiday in July, too, remember? Yes. That you can be celebrating. Yes, Do you remember exactly. what that is, right? Uh, I think it's Independence Day, if I'm not mistaken. It's my birthday. Oh, well, that, too. Well, obviously. <laughs> But you're supposed to list them in order of importance. You're supposed to start with the most important one first. Oh. I, I thought we went uh, numerically. Oh. So, so which letters of the alphabet? What, what do you mean numerically? They're both on the Well, July, July 4th and then uh, whenever your birthday is. July 4th. Oh, your birthday is on July 4th. Matt, how many shows have you done with me? <laughs> Why do you have to have your birthday on July 4th? That's a little selfish, isn't it? I think that it's very magnanimous, mag, magnanimous of me to be willing to share it with the current situation that we have going on in our country right now. No, okay. I, I think no. it shows me as a generous and kind and understanding person that I'm allowing them to keep my birthday, even though they're besmirching it. Yes. So, there we go. I do want to say an open commentary to my listeners, and then I'm going to allow Matt to either comment on my commentary or to add in anything, and then we're going to kind of get down to the business at hand, because there's been a lot of it, and I have a lot of questions for Matthew. Um, December 31st, 11.59, and January 1st, 12.01, was not in two minutes in which great magic happened and the world changed back to what it was before. 2021 It's an extension of 2020. We're at a different place. And as every year, it's just the extension of the last one. 
There are no miracles or magic that happen at midnight. Cinderella actually didn't lose a glass slipper and turn from a beautifully bald gowned woman into somebody that was sweeping the cinders out of the fireplace in rags. We came into 2021 somewhat enthusiastic, uh, 2020 enthusiastically. Many of us thought this would be the year we'd get to dump Trump. We were right. So let's look at it from the positive perspective. Um, we didn't plan on exactly what that road was going to look like. And it threw a lot of curves. Many have said, in fact, I've heard Matt say this, that he doesn't know that Trump wouldn't have got reelected if it hadn't been for the pandemic. That that turned out to be his Achilles heel. But it's done. We have a new president swearing in in 13 days. But we need to learn the lessons of 2020. We need to see that there is still a great disservice being done in this country by legitimate media, illegitimate media, politicians, and an encouragement to not think for yourself to not question and to be apathetic or to allow this country to be taken over by special interest groups who are never interested in you and me. And this has been a war cry. Everything from Black Lives Matter to the handling of the pandemic to the shit show that happened yesterday in Washington, D.C. But this should fire us up to think smarter, act smarter, speak more precisely, and hold more accountable anybody who says they have the power of change to make sure that what we have just experienced, we will not go through again. We must actively participate in our democracy if we do not want it to die. We have to actively participate in all of the greatness that has been created off the backs of other people, through the mistreatment of other people, through lots of shenanigans, Lots of shit shows and lots of shadiness. We have a history and it ain't pretty. And we have people that are very committed to wanting to turn back the hands of time. And no, I don't mean share. We have people that want to somehow live what they think are their healthy on days of, uh, you know, when they were the coolest, the greatest when we were the greatest nation and we had the greatest people. It was bullshit then, it's bullshit now. We got to recognize it for what it is. For every person that was great for, there was just as many people that it was horrible for, but we got to be colorblind. We got to choose to not see it. And we are seeing the death of the age of the dinosaur of make America great again, but it ain't dead yet. And it's going to try to get re It's going to try to get resurrected. It is going to be worse than a zombie in one of those zombie killer movies. The night that never ended starring some of your favorite zombies rising up from the grave, like Cruz, Howley, Trump and Trump, and Trump, and Trump, and then Kushner, and then Trump, they're all going to, all the little Trumpettes and all the little Trump supporters are going to try to rise from the grave with this. And we best better not have a short memory. If you don't want to lose this democracy, you have to fight for it. And there are many ways to do it, and I'm not going to go into them all now. I've gone into them before, 
Matt will hang up and go, I was on this show already two months earlier. <laughs> I got yelled at because I was not very good on it, at least not first. <laughs> but we cannot give up hope. We must allow this to embolden us and impassion us that the everyday American is compassionate, does care about what happens to their fellow man, and we have to stop buying into all of the bullshit. And it comes from everywhere, both sides of the aisle, certainly from both sides of the media, the fake news, the real news, the alternative news, and the snooze you news. We have to learn to think for ourselves. We have given away too much power, and we have taken the eye off the ball of what can make this country great. But we have not reached our greatest hour. We have not been a nation of compassion for all of its citizens. We have never been a nation of full equality for all of its citizens. And people of higher wealth numbers, sometimes of greater education or greater connections, or even a greater ability to throw a ball through a hoop or a pigskin down a field, get preferential treatment to somebody who may be saving your child's life in an emergency room or saving their life in a counseling situation or taking care of them in a daycare so that they can grow up and you can work. We dismiss those people and we treat them like they are less than, than, than what is underneath our foot as we go for the great American illusion dream that wealth is everything, fame is everything, and that these people, because of their wealth, of their fame, of their family, are somehow smarter or better than us. Sometimes they're smarter, but smart and having integrity or compassion or value as a person, I'll take value and compassion. I'll take integrity. And we ain't seen a whole lot of it lately. So 2021 is a time for us to really check, check in on our own priorities and to really look at the ugliness of our actions, no matter who we're judging, who we're putting down, who we are thinking somehow is less than we are. There are many hurting, disenfranchised people that wear a red cap, but they're hurting too. And as they're hurting, they hurt. None of it is okay. And if we really want to move forward, we have to truly welcome everybody in, listen to everybody, and hold everybody equally, equally accountable for their actions. No matter what color hat they're wearing, no matter what color skin they're wearing, no matter what gender they're wearing, makes no difference. We've never had a country that is truly equal to all people, which is why years ago I, they tried to suspend me for not saying the Pledge of Allegiance of the flag when I was in high school. And when they said, why wouldn't I say it? I said, well, I'll say striving for liberty and justice for all. But I will not say that we have liberty and justice for all because we do not. And if we keep telling ourselves that, we will not, we will believe the lie and we will not do the fight we need to so we can have liberty and justice for all. I was a sophomore in high school saying that to the school board. And it's every bit as true now as it was 40 years ago, 45 years ago. Oh, God, I hate <laughs> it being old. Anyway, <laughs> now. It is still true today as it was 45 years ago. I was 15 saying, I will not say we have liberty and justice for all because we do not. And we still don't. But if you think that that's one of the things that makes America great, then do the things that say that you believe we should have liberty and justice for all. Support that everybody gets one vote, that everybody's vote matters that every person matters no matter what their net income is or their wealth 
or their position on the board of whatever company or whatever size check they wrote you so you could go and flash all of your credentials and all of your brilliant visions and ideas in the swamp. If you really believe in America, then believe in the fact that we were formed for all people to have liberty and justice. All people. Everyone. So I'm done. The next sound you'll hear is me stepping off the pedestal, off the altar, down from the podium, off the box, and say, Matt, your turn. Is there anything you'd like to say, or would you like to dive into the events of the last few weeks? Oh, we could probably dive into the events. <laughs> There's a lot there. <laughs> okay. Well, I did my preaching. Where do you want to start? Because you're always more on top of this than I am, and I've had clients all day yesterday and all day today, so I've been just grabbing five minutes, read a paragraph here, look at my New York Times, go to my Apple News. So review for me what exactly happened and where does it leave us? Well, I hear the music. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going Om? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4pm Pacific Time, 7pm Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. These are the sounds of a dinner. A dinner that almost didn't happen. A dinner now served thanks to people like you. Due to COVID-19, 17 million more Americans may face hunger. Feeding America is helping our neighbors in need. And if you're able, you can too. Donations are being accepted at feedingamerica.org slash coronavirus. Brought to you by the Ad Council and Feeding America. 200 Food Bank Strong. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show. Welcome to 2021. Welcome to a brand new year. And all miracles have happened and are possible. And at 1201, we became a loving, compassionate company, country that is treating everybody equally and fairly. All people are taken care of. No one is homeless. Everyone's dream will come true. That's what happened, right, Matt? 1201 on January. 4th. I might have, uh, I might have missed it. I, 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 maybe that was 1201. 1202 was uh, different, I think. <sighs> You got to grab it quick because, you know, the mirage only lasts for so long. That's right. Less than 60 seconds, I guess. <laughs> well, it certainly didn't last for seven days. Yeah. Okay. Where do you want to start? Please start. Well, you know, I mean, obviously uh, the events of yesterday are still in uh, fresh in uh, everyone's minds and um, I certainly didn't expect things to go to the level that they did, but they did. And, uh, I suppose it's not a surprise given Trump's 
rhetoric and uh you know we've never seen anything quite like that in our lifetimes that's for sure um and uh you know now there's uh people resigning from the administration i don't know if there were any more resignations announced while i was on the air uh you know because i was on the air four to six i didn't happen to see anything pop up but but there may have been um but you know, there's all this talk about the 25th Amendment, which is a fantasy. They don't have time. It's such a process to do that. But, uh, yeah, so it'll, it'll be a very interesting, what do we have, uh, 12 days left of uh, the Trump administration? It'll be uh, fascinating to see what happens next and, uh, and frightening. Well, yeah, so, you know, that's... So there's a few different things I want to get your take on. But mm-hmm. on one hand, impeachment can't happen in 12 days. That's just no. a waste of time. Yeah. 25th Amendment, I don't know that if that can happen in, in, in 12 days or not. I don't understand enough about exactly what would have to happen and how quickly it would happen. But, in you know, in 12 days, in the 12 days of, the crucifixion of America at the hands of Trump, he can still do an awful lot of damage out the door. And he is a vindictive bastard. Yes. We see this over and over and over again. And, and things that he does to, to take out his wrath and his feeling of the world is being unfair and unjust to him. And so is there any way to minimize the damage that this man will try to do going out the door, throwing this temper tantrum because the Republican party, the Trump version of the Republican party is going to cheer him on and tell him he's fabulous. No matter what he does, the delusionals are going to support it and say, we don't understand what he's really doing, but you know, the Republicans are jumping ship faster than than rats in a hurricane are jumping ship um as far as supporting them except for those little handfuls so is is there any any way that we can stop him from deciding to send a nuclear bomb to iran do we have any recourse of action knowing that he is this mentally unstable because he he was he was melting down yesterday he was having well, I think a the best issue I think the best we can hope for is that, uh, you know, cooler heads in the administration will try to contain him, which I think they've always, I I suspect have always kind of done to some degree anyway. Um, you know, I think they'll try to prevent him from doing anything crazy. They'll, they'll try to sabotage his efforts, uh, as much as they can. Um, you know, the military hopefully will not accept any kind of order from him that is illegal, even though he is the commander in chief, they cannot. Uh, they are not allowed to carry out any illegal order, um, regardless. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, he's going to try to do as much damage as he can, but I think the most we can hope for is that the people around him will do their best to contain him. Um, the reason the 25th amendment is off the table, uh, despite, I mean, it's fun to speculate about, and, and there's a lot of speculation in the media and that there's discussions about it allegedly going on in the white house. But I think it's off the table for two reasons. Number one, I cannot imagine that Mike Pence has the stones to actually try to do that. I don't believe he has it in him. Um, and and but, but more importantly, even if he does, it doesn't matter because there just isn't time. Um, people have a misconception about the, the 25th Amendment that the vice president can just invoke it if you know, the president's incapacitated or something. Well, I I mean, essentially, as I understand the process, basically what has to happen is uh, the vice president and the cabinet, a majority of the cabinet, have to all agree that the amendment must be invoked, and then they uh, write a letter uh, to the president saying that uh, we believe that you are uh, now unfit for office and, uh, and are asking you to, uh, to, to effectively turn over power, uh, to the vice president. 
uh, the president then has the option if he wants to to respond. You know, he can either accept that or he can respond with a letter of his own saying, I disagree, I think I'm fine. Um, and then the vice president and the cabinet can then respond with a letter of their own to that letter, which goes to Congress, and then Congress has to debate and vote on whether or not to invoke the 25th Amendment. So it's actually a whole big process. Oh, and I believe Congress has 21 days uh, to do that. So there's, there's nothing immediate about it. It would have to be an immediate thing, and there's nothing immediate about it, and it would actually it would take longer to successfully invoke the 25th Amendment than what's left of Trump's term. So that's, that's just off the table. It's, a, it's an interesting thing to speculate about, but it's not going to happen. So I think the best we can hope for is that people will contain him, and if he tries to do something really horrible, like the example you used, uh, sending a, a, a nuke into Iran, uh, hopefully he would be uh, prevented from doing that, and his uh, hopefully his worst uh, impulses are uh, sabotaged by those around him. So that's that's the best we can hope for. Yeah, I don't even know how much of his cabinet... Uh, and and I, it was an interesting and side thought that's probably just going down a rabbit trail. But I don't even know how much of his cabinet is left because they have been resigning. Of course, you know, Elaine Chow, Mitch McConnell's wife, resigned. Yes. And um, and he has he has as many acting people that uh, you know came in so late in the game and there was in so much upheaval that I don't even know how any of that falls into any of this and, and could cause its own shadow of, of uh, you know, of Giuliani coming to Trump's rescue so this doesn't happen. Of course, the other thing is, is if somebody, uh, and, and I have to say, I think one of the few people left that might even have the ability to influence it might be his daughter. I don't even think it's uh, his sons are as crazy, batshit crazy as he is. Oh yeah, but Don think, Jr. certainly is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like he looked like he was frothing at the mouth. They should check him for rabies. Yeah, um, <laughs> but she might convince him if he ever wants to have a chance to come back and run for reelection. Which I think that he probably has burned has burned that bridge with this action, but you can't tell. Loyalists are very very loyal, unless of course he's yeah. in an orange suit uh, at that point, which could also very much happen. Um, <laughs> that he needs to not do anything that makes it impossible for him to get to run again for office. That if he does something that can actually create federal criminal charges out the door. I mean, you know, and of course he doesn't understand what he can do. And he, he's never understood the office. It's clear by some of the comments he makes. And he says he, does, he doesn't even understand what the power of the presidency is in, in many cases. Yeah. Like, like it's, it's like we're playing romper room the highest officer in the land. <laughs> right. So, okay. But I, I wanted to understand better. I, I knew that neither one of them were feasible, but I wanted to understand why the 25th wasn't feasible. And thank you. You explained that to me. And I'm sure some of my listeners may have wondered that as possible as, as well. Um, I read that there was a meeting of very powerful CEOs who had been supporting the Republican agenda and even reported were supporting some of Trump's challenging things, which have actually not only vowed that they would not support Trump, but they weren't support any with any financial donations or support any of those people who spoke up at the Electoral College thing that just happened like Cruz or Howley that they are now writing them off the list and will not support them to be reelected when their time is up. 
Did you read about that? What do you think? Have these people shot themselves in the foot or do you think that they're going to going to be able to become the Trump replacement in his loyalist set of cuckoo nuts? No, I know I know what you're talking about who the group is, although I forget the name. Um and they're they're actually advocating for the Twenty Fifth Amendment. In fact, if it's who I'm thinking of, but again, it's a, that's a non-starter. But no, I don't I don't think they'll have any particular effect one way or the other. To be honest with you, you know, that, that people will forget about that. I mean, a lot of this is going to get forgotten in in uh, you know once Trump is done. And and in fact, the Republican Party will attempt to whitewash what happened yesterday, um, and and will uh, they'll they'll try to move on from it, but. Um, That'll be interesting to see, though, you know, once once Trump is actually gone, how much and I think there will be a distinct split as there is now in the Republican Party. How how many Republicans try to just kind of move on and pretend Trump never existed and, and how many of them will try to um, try to still be as Trumpian as possible, because. Obviously, there's still millions of Americans who are going to be loyal to Trump no matter what, which is why they're so afraid to cross him. I mean, obviously, these senators who tried to uh, derail the certification of votes, you know, they knew that there was no chance of uh, no chance of succeeding at that and overturning the election. It was all to placate Trump's ego, which isn't really as much about placating Trump's ego as it is about tra- uh, placating Trump's base, which is the Republican base. So, um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I suspect that uh, most of Trump's base will remain intact even after. I mean, you know, these aren't these aren't smart people particularly. I mean, they don't. For example, they don't understand the basic difference between patriotism and sedition. You know, they're they're and. and can't explain it to them if you and, and if if they are smart enough to realize that what happened yesterday was not okay then they just respond with you know well what about blm and antifa or they'll even tell you that um it was actually blm and antifa who stormed the capitol yesterday i've seen a lot of that on social media today so you know it, it really is a cult the, the modern Republican Party is uh, is is a cult, and uh, Trump is uh, their leader, and uh, they're willing to die for him. Uh, 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 you know, like that woman who got shot in the neck uh, yesterday. That that that's how much they love him. They're willing to die for him if they have to. So uh, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay. Well, with I won't shed any tears. <laughs> What's that? No. I said, I'm, I'm okay with them dying for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, because, you know, in the past, no matter how dastardly the president has been, there's always been this kind of, well, now that they're out of office, now that they're done, we're going to stop harassing them. Like, you know, it only opens up the wound. It only, you know, keeps it alive. And now we want to take a a reconciliating energy of healing. I don't think they can do it in this case. I think that will do more damage than good. Because the ones that are going to stay angry are going to stay angry no matter what they do. If they don't prosecute, if they don't prosecute Trump, then they're going to say, see, they knew that they didn't have enough of a case to do it. They yeah. knew that we were wrong. If they do prosecute him, well, the wound wasn't going to go away anyways. So, yeah. first of all, if he's not locked up in jail, which I think he could be, he has committed crimes, and we're all pretty sure that there are crimes he committed before he ever became president that have come home to haunt him. Mm-hmm. Um, but if he's not in prison, he will go after screwing up every Republican that has on his vindictive list by finding some crazy ass supporter that he can go and stump for to become the new senator or House of Rep for them. You know this is going to happen. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah, his, 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 his plan is to remain uh, an influential force in the Republican Party. Um, that's why he's, I mean, the real reason he's trying to raise all this money is to pay his uh, future legal bills, I think. But, you know, it's under the guise of he's going to run for president in 2024 and, and, and try to help some other candidates along the way. And, um, yeah, assuming he, if he doesn't end up in prison, he's going to continue to be a force in Republican politics. And, yeah, he's, he's going to try to get even with, uh, you know, with, with, with everybody who didn't support him. And, um, you know, that, that's why they're so afraid of him. Because they're ultimately not afraid of him. They're afraid of the base. But at this point, is this a road to implosion? Because he's going to be going, you know, lucky for Mitch, he just got reelected for six years. Because, you know, he had, Mitch would be the first person in 2022 if he was up for a reelection that Trump would try to replace. And even Lindsay came down on the wrong side at the end of it. <laughs> you know, yeah. he's going to be going after some of the most se- most powerful secondary Republican figures in the Republican Party. Could this could this cause the creation of a new party? Yeah, people always speculate about that, but I don't think so. I really doubt it. I'd love to see it, but I really doubt it. So if Trump's not in prison, so what, so first of all, what do you think for America? This is your opinion. I'm asking Mm -hmm. for America. What do you think the way forward is on January 21st around all of this stuff and what Trump has done? Well, I mean, I think, I think Joe Biden, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people weren't enthusiastic about him, including me, but I think Biden does have, a, he, he's got that, uh, he's got this thing about him. Like he, he comes across like he genuinely wants to heal the country and like he's genuinely interested in unity. You know, Trump uh, talked about unity in 26, well, in 2015, when he started running, he talked about how he'd be able to unify the country and be a uniter, not a divider. And of course, he turned out to be 100% the opposite of that. I think Biden is genuinely interested in uniting the country. Um, and I think he will do his best to do so sincerely. Um, he won't be able to really unify the country in the sense that, um, you know, the, the MAGA cult is never going to give Joe Biden a chance. They should, because Joe Biden isn't exactly a left-wing radical. You know, he's, he's a kind of Democrat who, if you're a Republican, but you're going to get stuck with a Democrat as president, Biden is probably the kind of Democrat you want to get stuck with. He's a moderate, centrist, northeastern corporate Democrat. Um, you know, he's, he's nothing too crazy. He's not AOC, you know, so there's no reason for them to panic over him. Um, so they should give him a chance, but they won't, but that's okay. I, you know, I want a president who, um, will maybe be interested in, uh, having a, a distribution plan for the vaccine because apparently the Trump administration had no plan for that part. Um, uh, you know, and once we get past COVID-19, I think everything else will seem a little smoother, a little easier. Um, and I think it's just going to be a, a much more positive environment overall in the, in the country. I think there, there will be a greater sense of calm and of normalcy, um, without uh, Trump at the helm, you know, constantly trafficking in hate and anger. That, that's all Trump has to offer people is hate and anger and resentment. And, uh, you know, that, that white rage, <laughs> you know? That's all Trump has to offer, and he's been successful with it. He won the the presidency with it, but um, I think not having that in the equation, I I think I, 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 the first step in our way forward is we have to get past COVID, and I think everything else will be a little bit easier after that. None of it will ever be easy, but it'll be a little bit easier than it is now. Okay. Well-
The Real Conscious Connection, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Vox Novus, the new voice. Vox Novus, the new dimension. Vox Novus, thought and movement leaders who will share from their experience and offer tools to help us navigate our rapidly changing world. My name is Victor Furman. Join me every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Own Times Radio for Vox Novus, the new voice. 911, what is your emergency? My kid shot himself. All right, where's the wounds? 911, what's your emergency? Please help. My son shot his brother. 911, what is your emergency? 911, please state your emergency. Every day, eight kids and teens are unintentionally killed or injured by loaded and unlocked guns. It wasn't locked. It wasn't locked. It wasn't locked. Learn how to make your home safer at endfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and End Family Fire. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the last segment of the first show of 2021 here on the Dr. Kevin Show at Home Times. So I do want to put out to my listening audience that if you go to weboflight.com or Web of Light Expo uh, uh, on my Facebook, at the Facebook page, you can get information about the upcoming uh, Web of Light Expo speaker series. The first one will be January 17th, where I have uh, five top speakers, including myself, that are going to be offering insight and guidance and tools uh, and motivations for 2021, including Wendy Darling, Creating a Miraculous Life, It's Never Too Late, Karen Campbell, Honoring Our Losses, who will lead you through a meditation about how to honor all of our losses and allow yourself to move through them and become more because of them. We're going to have Donna Bass, a crossover of an herbalist and a scientist who are going to talk about five tips to stay healthy in the time of COVID that are easy and simple and you can be using after COVID has come and gone to be living a healthier life, things you can do right at home. We're also going to have Rain Thomas, uh, singer and uh, breast cancer poster child who's been working and raising money and been out front and leading lots of uh, things for breast cancer since the 1970s. And as a professional actress and singer, she is going to be doing healing through uh, laughter and music. And she's going to deposit a song that you can use all 2021 to help you move forward. And I'll be doing Creating Your Best New Year. Again, that is January 17th. Uh, it is a Zoom conference, so wherever you are and whoever you are, you can choose to come and join us for that day uh, and those activities. Again, you can go to weboflight.com or you can go to the Facebook page, uh, Web of Light Expo, and you can get all the information there. So, Matt... Yeah. We are now we are now at the question of and I and I and I heard everything you said and maybe I missed it but I didn't quite hear the hear the answer of the of the actual question. Hmm. I know it's going to get easier after the time of covid but I'm going to reframe the question cuz I realized that maybe I wasn't clear enough. What actions do you think the incoming administration, the incoming attorney general, who's going to be Garland Merrick, because now the Democrats have won the Senate. There won't be a problem with getting him confirmed, I suspect. Um, attorney general, 
should take because what Trump does, did was a, a legal offense. I mean, he broke the law. And he did. Yeah, I don't think president. And he he incited violence. I don't um, I don't suspect there's going to be any great appetite to go after Trump uh, as far as the new administration. Joe Biden has said he will be uh, hands off as far as directing or or not directing uh, the Department of Justice in in terms of what they do, because he doesn't want the department to be deep uh, to be politicized. And I suspect that Merrick Garland uh, certainly does not want the department to be politicized in any way. I, I know that there will be some pressure on the Biden administration to go after Trump, but I, I think that they probably won't have a lot of appetite to do it. I think because, um, because they want to avoid the politi- politicization of, uh, of the DOJ, but also too, I, I think they'll be perfectly happy to just leave it for the state of New York uh, attorney general's office, because my theory, and I've, you know, I've, as I've said many times, I believe that once Trump is no longer president, and this is a big part of why he's flailing around wildly trying to save his presidency, I believe that once he is no longer president, the uh, state attorney general's office of New York will move to indict him. And then his legal problems uh, begin, and there will be an avalanche of that, and there will be no one to pardon him. Uh, Even if he were to resign early and Mike Pence were to become president, Pence can pardon Trump for federal crimes. He cannot pardon him for state crimes. And Trump is in a world of trouble, and there is no way out for him. Uh, So... I don't think there will be a lot of appetite on the part of the Biden administration. I mean, there might even be a temptation, a temptation only. This wouldn't actually happen, but there might be a temptation, at least among some of Biden's advisors, to say, hey, you know, Ford pardoned Nixon to get the country just past it and, and over it. Maybe you should pardon Trump. Now, that wouldn't actually happen, but... But I'm just saying, I don't think there will be any appetite to really do that. I think they'll leave it for the state of New York to do what they're going to do. And what they're going to do, if successful, might put Trump behind bars for the rest of his life. And uh, he might uh, end up in an orange jumpsuit that uh, uh, matches his uh, skin tone uh, really well. So, have you heard the story that it looked like on January 19th, he was going to try to fly and be at his golf course in Scotland. Uh, I had not heard that story. (laughs) So a a plane that would be the plane that Trump used when he didn't use air force one had scheduled to fly from DC to the airport that Trump flew in flies into to do, to be in Scotland on January, on the ninth of Jan- on, the, on the night of January nineteenth, and they scheduled a, I guess there's a flight plan. There's something you got to schedule to to have that happen. And the person who is basically, I don't think it's a prime minister, but the person who is the de facto head in Scotland itself, um, a woman, I believe. I'm pretty sure that they said it was a she. She said Scotland's borders are closed for any incoming travelers because of the time of COVID and refused to let them authorize the flight plan for him to fly to Scotland on the 19th of January. Oh, wow. Yeah. I hadn't, uh, I had not heard any of that. Um, I know there was, uh, there was speculation of him, uh, going to Mar-a-Lago, uh, on on inauguration day, taking Air Force One to Mar-a-Lago and making them have to uh, pick it up, pick up uh, Air Force One from Florida, <laughs> like a repo, <laughs> which he, he'll probably be needing to get used to if he's in as much uh, financial trouble as he's uh, purported to be in. But 
Um, but no, I hadn't heard this uh, Scotland uh, story. I do know he will not be at the inauguration, but apparently Mike Pence has uh, now said that uh, Pence uh, will be uh, at the inauguration. So, but uh, but uh, Trump obviously will not be. Well, you know, when everything was said and done, there's a picture of of Pence and Pelosi elbow bumping. Yes. I wonder if there's a little bit of a thank God we got rid of him on both their parts. Uh, Maybe. Or or it might have just been the, the perfunctory uh, handshake at the end of the certification process. But, of course, you shouldn't actually shake hands with anyone right now so that they elbow bumped instead. It might have just been that. People might be reading into it. But maybe not. There, 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 might, have been, there might have been something more to that. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Let's face it. There's got to be some part of Pence that's relieved that this nightmare, this part of the nightmare is over. I'm sure. I'm sure. This is absolutely. This is waking up every day, first thing you think of is what did the crazy, what did the crazy bastard do today that I'm going to have to either avoid reporters or come up with some way to say nothing that sounds that keeps everybody happy, to stay out of his firing line. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I almost have some sympathy for Pence. Uh huh. Although, have you ever noticed the way that Pence gazes at Trump when Trump is speaking? It's very very much like the way Nancy used to used to gaze at Ronnie uh, while he was speaking. You know, so I don't know. I, I think he might have had a little bit of a man crush on uh, on Trump. Not that he would ever admit it, because you know God would be very upset with him. But you know. Of course God wouldn't be. God's Trump, right, in that universe? So God would have been okay with it. Uh, now, I believe uh, Trump is Jesus, not God. But that gets into the Holy Trinity. Yes, yes. Um, so I'm going to roll this by because I've seen two or three versions of this story on different sources that make me think this is not a made-up story, that he was, gonna, he was going to go to Scotland. Yeah, which would basically mean he would be out of the country at the time of the inauguration. Trying to figure out what he was going to do, knowing that the state of New York was going to be waiting for him. (laughs) Right. Yeah, maybe. No, it's, it's entirely plausible. You know, he does some kind of I'm out of the country still stirring up shit through my Twitter account, which I don't know. Did they turn it back on? They had, they had, they had stopped his Twitter and his Facebook, I think for a minimum of 12 hours. Uh, His uh, Facebook, he's now banned from Facebook for the rest of his presidency and Instagram as well, but I'm not sure about Twitter. Yeah. Well, can you imagine the fit he threw when Twitter banned him? for at least oh, 12 yeah. hours while this is going <laughs> on. I mean, I would have bought tickets to that show. Absolutely. Um, but I, I thought this, and I could be completely crazy, and I'm okay if I'm completely crazy. I think he was going to go to Scotland. I think he was going to be out of the country, so nothing could be served to him mm-hmm. because he was scheduled it for January 19th. He's still president. Yep. He goes to Scotland. He hides out there, figuring out what he can do, what his options are, and he decides whether he's going to accept an offer to go to Russia. Oh, <laughs> that would be something, and it would it would explain a lot. <laughs> and Putin would be over the moon to be housing the ex president of the United States and everything that's in his head. Yeah, as the coup du jour of, of, you know, screwing over the United States. Yeah, yeah. But hopping, you know, he has he would have a legitimate reason to go to Scotland because he's got a golf club there, and he's mm-hmm. been there. No one's going to stop him on January nineteenth to fly over to Scotland, right? 21st, the state is now 
state of New York is starting to serve, serve him with paperwork. Everybody says, you ain't beating this. You go home. You're going to jail. Vlad, would you like some company? Could well, be. Buddy, sure. <laughs> and I think it, it, that saying, go ahead. No, I was just saying it's possible. It's possible. And I think the we're thinking of taking Air Force One and flying it to um, the Margo, wherever it is. Mar-a-Lago? The, where, where is it that he is at again? I'm sorry. I'm oh, Mar-a-Lago in Florida? Yeah, Mar-a-Lago. I don't think he would have been on that plane. I think he would have done that. So everybody was looking in one direction. Well, he took this other plane in the other direction. So nobody realized he was running out of the country. And then from outside the country, he would be able to stir up all sorts of shit, saying he was forced to leave the country because he feared for his life. And these people knew that he was telling the truth. And he would be able to stir shit for years from Russia and probably be treated like a crown prince over there. Could be. Could be. We'll know soon. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> he has no loyalty. We'll talk to you next week on the Dr. Kevin Show for Thoughtful Thursday with Reverend Lori Powers Otto. Matt, as always, lovely to have you back on the show, and we'll we'll be having a very different conversation in February, I'm sure. Yes, looking forward to it. Thank you.